Welcome back to Close Up. For some in the Trump White House, it's abandoned ship. There have been a wave of resignations from the administration since the Capitol was broken into and desecrated by a mob. Top cabinet secretaries saying they believe the president played a direct role in inciting those rioters to violence. For some on the right, the urge to resist President Trump came much earlier. One of the first to raise their voice was and is former NHGOP chairwoman Jennifer Horn, now of the Lincoln Project, who joins us now. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Adam. First, uh, what was your gut reaction as you watched those images of the Capitol under siege? It was really frightening. You know, it was really scary on, on a lot of levels. Um, this is different. What we saw happen on Wednesday is different than protests, than the kinds of protests we've seen uh, under this presidency over the last four years. I think people have to really be conscious, really be cognizant of what happened on Wednesday. This was a, a, um, a, an assault on democracy. It was an, a seditious act. It was an attempt to overthrow, to overturn a legitimate election in what is supposed to be the freest nation on earth. But what makes it so frightening, I think, beyond that, is that it was incited by the president of the United States. And watching this unfold, watching the um, kind of the mob grow um, as they pushed through the barricades, as they got into the Capitol, realizing the, the actual danger that our congressmen and senators were in under these circumstances, um, as we learned about uh, people, you know, a, a woman being shot, uh, we've since learned that a Capitol police officer died after being hit in the head by one of the protesters with a, um, a fire extinguisher. Um, this was a deadly attack and the damage that it can do to democracy, the damage that it could have done to, to America really is immeasurable. And I'm worried that people don't see that, that there are still too many out there who think it's just another protest. What's the appropriate remedy here, in your opinion? Well, I would like to see Donald Trump removed. I mean, I know that uh, they, they, there are a lot of people out there saying, oh, there's only 13 days left or only 12 or 11 days left by the time this, you know, airs. Um, that's not the point anymore, first of all. Uh, but secondly, when you see the damage that was done, the life that was lost because of an American president inciting violence uh, two days ago, um, what could happen in the next 11 or 12 or 13 days? Uh, I, I think that, but more importantly than that, is we have to embrace our constitutional norms again. We have to have an America that is led by law and order, that is led by the Constitution. This president should be removed. He is clearly unstable and dangerous, and he should be removed from office, and he should be uh, removed in such a way that it, it, that it is recorded in the history books what he has done. Um, he, he and those who have supported him and empowered him should not be allowed to whitewash the truth once he is gone. Uh, Democrats in the House look like they're going to be moving forward with impeachment potentially by Wednesday, fast tracking it. This would once again put Republicans in a position where they have to choose. And uh, this right. is your former your former party now. What's your message to those Republicans? This is again one of these kind of moments uh, where it's uh, stand with the president or or take a different path. Yeah, well, my message is do the right thing. I mean, that's always been my message. It's what it's always what I've tried to do. It's hard when you are uh, deep into the workings of a political party, especially a political party that you passionately agree with, uh, at least on some level, in its founding principles, its core ideals, um, even if they are past ideals. It is hard to make that break. It's hard to, to do that sometimes, to be the one who stands up and speaks up. Uh, but I implore them to do the right thing. And frankly, it doesn't end with the president. We have 13 Republican senators who signed on to uh, actively engage in overturning what they know are the legitimate 
uh, results of an election. They need to be held accountable uh, once Donald Trump is dealt with as well. Maybe after the uh, the new President Biden is sworn in, whatever the appropriate time is. But there are constitutional checks and balances. There are constitutional um, um, structures here that can be implemented, and it is not without precedent. You know, in back in 1861, ten members of the United States Senate were expelled by their colleagues because they. They, uh, they plotted against the United States government as we approached this uh, in the opening days of the Civil War. I don't, I, I don't begin to compare this, obviously, to the Civil War, but that's what these people have done. They have plotted against the, the uh, free and fair elections. They've plotted against uh, the duly elected government of the United States. You were chair of the party through a first in the nation primary cycle, so you're well acquainted with ambitious politicians. What's your assessment of Senator Josh Hawley? He wants to be president of the United States someday, and he's willing to take the lowest road and the most despicable uh, anti-American path to get there. Um, and if you watched his remarks uh, from the Senate chambers on Wednesday night, after the Senate reconvened, after what turned out to be a deadly mob tried to take over the U.S. Capitol, after seeing all of this unfold on television himself, after being in that chamber while people outside wanted to break in to hold hostage Josh Hawley and our American senators, even after all of that, he stood without shame on the floor of the U.S. Senate, played directly to the camera, um, and continued the same, uh, same un-American plot, the same un-American plan uh, that he uh, came into the day with. Um, we need to see these people for who they are. And, and after all of that, all Josh Hawley could think about was he wants to be president someday, no matter what it takes. I find people like Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, frankly, much more dangerous than Donald Trump because they actually know better. Donald Trump lives in a mentally unstable, um, this, this bizarre, narcissistic, you know, un, un, unright, unreal world, disconnected from reality in his own brain. That's not true of Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley's and uh, Josh Hawley and others on that list. They know the truth. They know what they're doing, and they know the potential consequences. They have to be stopped before they get anywhere near the White House. In the Republican base, there's obviously a, a more diversity in their reaction to this event than there have been in prior sort of controversies that have bubbled up. You see some people stepping back a little bit. Others, though, uh, jump right in and say, well, I think this is Antifa and that this was some sort of right. false flag operation. Do you engage with those folks? And what do you say to those people who are like, no, no, this can't be us. It's, it's the yeah. other side. I have I've spent a lot of years trying to engage with those folks. I do it a lot less in the last you know, 12 months or so, um, only because I've come to understand that there are some people who are simply not going to be moved by facts. Um, but as a people, as an American people, we cannot allow ourselves to be drawn into a mindset where we deny what we see, where we deny what we hear, where we deny what we know to be true. These were Donald Trump supporters who came from across the country at the beckoning of Donald Trump to rally with him on this day in advance of, uh, of the constitutional ritual that was supposed to take place peacefully in our capital. And he brought them together for this purpose. What happened on Wednesday is exactly what Donald Trump wanted to happen. This was intentional on his part. He wanted, Donald Trump slept soundly on Wednesday night with the knowledge that he was able to send forth literally an army of supporters who were willing to, um, to ransack, attack, kill, and die on his behalf. That's what happened on Wednesday, and that's what Donald Trump wanted. We've got time for one last quick thought here. Uh, I know you left the party, uh, not just in this immediate aftermath. This was weeks ago you did this, but what's the future of the GOP? I, don't, I, I can't begin to understand what the future of the GOP is going to be. You know, I didn't leave the party because of Donald Trump, and I tried to make that clear when I wrote about it. I lived for the last four years with the apparently naive belief or hope 
that when Donald Trump was defeated, that there would be people in our party who would come forward again and say, all right, we need to put this behind us. We need to reset. We need to remind ourselves of what Abraham Lincoln fought and ultimately died for in this country, that that's who we're supposed to be as Republicans, as Americans. And what happened after the election was that all of these Republicans who have the ambitions for future leadership decided that they were going to build the future of our party on the destruction of a defeated president. That was their moment when Donald Trump was defeated. That was their opportunity. And, Jennifer, and they chose to go in a very different direction. And we've got to this wrap up here, This is not my party. I, I hear you, but, but this is, a, you yeah. know, we're out of time, but uh, we thank you for your perspective uh, and we'll talk to you in the future. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Adam.